I'm here with Alex Spitzer. Good. We are going to be talking about uh, the real possibilities in the world of dance and technology. Mm -hmm. And in particular, uh, we're coming at this with uh, you having been the first person in the world, very likely, yeah. to have ever graduated from a four-year program in dance, Correct. to move on to run a career in dance, run your own dance company, and experience all of the challenges and solutions of making that happen while using a wheelchair. Yeah, I started dancing back in 1990. Saw an article on a guy choreographing something with someone able body and thought, hey, that's something I could do on the same level as someone able body. Because in dance, you're creating to the best of your abilities mm -hmm. and what you can do between two people or a group or however. I did a show, and we had about 300 people show up for the show. After the show, my modern dance teacher saw the audience response, saw what I was doing, and she used to be a professional dancer herself. So she asked me, have you ever thought about dancing professionally or in college? So five months later, I started Spitzer Dance Company, which is my own company when I was 20 years old. Wow. And... <clears throat> We did five shows in the first two years, and I've been involved with many festivals and conferences throughout the years. I've danced from Los Angeles to New York, and nice. I've been asked to dance internationally, but I've not. What, what stops you from doing that? Traveling is hard, because lifting me on and off a plane is not easy. Going into restrooms is not easy on a plane. So it's like this technological limit that if if that's not there, you just can't do it. I mean, it's not easily, not, not safely. easily. So I, I know you've reached the limits of your wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, what what ha Like, what are the limits? My body does dancing in the movement, and I want in the wheelchair. It, it you know helps me with that, but I try to not make the wheelchair the focal point of it either, because like whatever movement I do, I try to move my body first before the chair. So say if I'm turning right, I'm going to probably start turning right first before I turn the chair if I can. So the control, how the control responds, your ability yes. to to uh, influence it. Um, yeah. What what else? What else? What? I do lifts with people. People stand on my chair, having spots to stand on the chair. So the speed, your ability to control the speed, the chair. speed starts to matter. Yeah, it does because. You get one or two hundred extra more pounds on your chair, the chair's not going to go as fast. Or it might not be designed for that. Or designed for that, yeah. And does so, it give you any feedback? Do you ever? Do, can you tell? Does it tell you it's getting overloaded? Like no, I can feel it. I can tell when a chair is sure. stressing or. It's but like, it could give you feedback. Yeah, it could. potentially. It could I, dynamically adjust potentially. Possibly, yeah. I mean, it's the technology, and I've had chairs break. Oh. You know, either, you know, oops, I didn't mean to step on that or leaning in the wrong spot or catching on fire. Really? Yeah, there's electronics, just too much stress on it. Have you had that? Yes. Oh my God. Honestly, <laughs> That's kind of dangerous. Yeah, it's, uh, but again, it's not giving you any warning. No, it doesn't. But, I, but it could. It could, I mean, It yeah. could potentially, right? Yeah. I mean, you could have an app or a headset or even a little earbud that it would talk to you and say. Yeah, it could. Feature characteristics of the chair, like freewheeling or oh, yes. uh, automatic stop. Uh, yeah. These kinds of things matter too, right? Yeah, because like I, my chairs I dance in are very freewheeling. I'm able to turn off the brakes. So you can slide. And so it can... It's more graceful. It can coast across the stage. So I can like go to joystick and do a movement. Or have my hand on the joystick, but so I know when to stop. You it. can still stop it, but can you? right, it's not free wheeling, and I have no control. I have limited on this chair. I have limited controls where I can change some things, but not all the way to a specific where I need it for dancing. Right. My other chairs, I do have a controller, and that's how I can turn off the brakes. But because, not while you're dancing. No, not while you're you dancing. You have to do it prior to getting prior in the chair. Prior, before, or after. And you can't time it or set no, it to some can. other thing. Or, but also, right. too, this chair, 
say if it raises up too, which might be something you need to use in bed sometime. So the so the chair could also potentially have an edge sensor of sorts as yeah. a backup. True. Right? You could have freewheeling on, but it could actually detect the edge coming and then throw the brake in gradually. That would be nice. It could. But you have to be wearing a seatbelt too. Yeah. Or it could slow down at the right pace. If it knows it's coming, yeah. I mean, it's still yeah. better than having the chair fall on top of you. I agree completely. Yeah. There's a lot out there that could be done, you know, for electric wheelchairs or push wheelchairs or what can be done. You know, it's funny too, to me, is that the, and I, I know we're going to wrap it up pretty soon, but yeah. oftentimes artists come up with solutions out on the front edge. And over time, some of these things turn out to be very useful for lots of other purposes and applications. Mm -hmm. Art often leads life in the spaces. Yeah. So when we're talking about a dance wheelchair and ablement and all these kinds of movements and needs, yeah. some of these things probably relate to other kinds of activities someone who uses a wheelchair yeah. might want to be able to also do. Yeah. And so inventing it and figuring it out it surfaces here, yeah. but the actual latent need may be much broader. Yeah, it could help me do stuff outside of my dancing too. Right.